Hello lovely, lovely people. Welcome to St Michael's Bishop's Cleave, our lovely Facebook group. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's been great over these last, well it's a year isn't it? It's a year uh, on the 23rd and a couple of days time that we have had our first lockdown and stuff. So thank you for being on this journey over this last year. Many of you have been with us all the way through. Um, on Sundays, other days, through our Facebook activities. So thank you so much and welcome to you who have joined us uh, in recent months and weeks as well. Whether you feel you're a Christian or not, on the edge of things, or just having a look, or got doubts, or whatever, you're all really, really welcome. And if you're watching for the first time, yeah, hi, it's great to see you. So do say hello, if you're bold enough, just say hello. Um, again, as I often say, it's just lovely for other people to see you signing in and saying good morning or something like that maybe recognizing people from the church family that you haven't seen for months or just seeing other people there is just lovely so thank you to all of you uh, do comment as you go through as well and i look forward to sort of picking those up later on and if you're not watching live or you're watching some other time in the day or the week then uh, you're welcome to hope this time for you will be an inspiring and an encouraging one so um just to say, uh, if you're watching live, we do Zoom chat and coffee straight after this time. So an invite will come up for you. If you've never been before, you'd be welcome to come and join us for just a short time or pop in and pop out, you know, whatever suits you. So um, we are, well, I'll come to our story in just a moment. Um, I pray that God blesses us, though, as we just share this time together. And maybe, maybe you're able to take this time as a little bit of an oasis of calm if you like Sunday morning if you're watching live the regular time for you just kind of pull aside from work and other activities and so if you're there and you're able to be quiet and relaxed then bless you and if you're there trying to watch today and there's all sorts of things going on around you then bless you too may there be some snippets that you kind of pick up that may give you something to think about and chew over it in our uh, in our lives so I can remember Oh, a long time ago, when I was about 12 years old, something like that, had been a Christian, young Christian for a little while, but had gone away on this kind of young people's uh, Christian weekend thing. It was brilliant. We love going on these weekends uh, down to this place in Kent called Hildenborough Hall. Uh, it's a beautiful building and we used to play games and sing songs and do Bible stories and we loved it with our best mates. But I remember coming back from this particular one and I, I kind of shudder to think of it right now because um, we were stuck in a traffic jam and I was so kind of fired up about my faith that I can remember getting out of the car in the traffic jam and going along some of the cars and giving people like a kind of religious Christian tract, little booklet thing for them through their window to look at. I don't know what they must have thought of me. And then when we got back to school, I can still remember it vividly now, putting on my school uniform, in my blazer, and in my blazer top pocket, putting this little Christian booklet there, it was called... Uh, for, the, for those of you who've been Christians for years, you'll remember it, it's called The Four Spiritual Laws. And it was an introduction to the Christian faith. And I poked it out of my blazer pocket because I wanted people to see it. It was bright yellow and asked me about it so that I could tell them about Jesus. I don't know how successful of any of that stuff was, but I don't know. And I'm quite proud of my <laughs> playful, naive enthusiasm, if you like. But maybe that kind of thing would have been seen as being a bit pushy and putting people off. I wonder what impression of God you've had over the years, maybe going back a long way because of a Christian that you knew or met or the way that a church treated you. And, you know, sometimes churches have got that really wrong and churches and individual Christians can come across as judgmental. And I'm really sorry for that because it just has given to many uh, maybe at times for me during my early Christian life at different times, that sense that God is an angry, judgmental person sitting on a cloud somewhere with a big stick in his hand, just waiting for us to get it wrong, like an angry head teacher, you know, and that is just so completely wrong. And if you've, you know, been on the end of that kind of view of God um, personally with a Christian or church, I'm just really, really sorry that we haven't always had a great track record and I'm really sorry for that but I'll, but we're going to be discovering something more about what God is really like today 
Um, because that's kind of God I just kind of caricature. It's not a God I recognise in Scripture. And it's not a God that I uh, believe in and know and enjoy a relationship with, with today. So we're going to get back to our story. I say get back to our story because this is kind of episode two of a story that we started two weeks ago, actually. Uh, if you did, weren't there for episode one, don't worry, I'll do a quick recap. But it's a story that involves a loving father and two siblings, two brothers, actually. I wonder... Uh, what it's like for you if you've not been a single child growing up with siblings. I wonder where you were in the age order. Maybe you were the older brother or sister. Uh, maybe you were the younger brother or sister. Often maybe there were two of you. Maybe you, there were three of you. You were the middle brother or sister. Or maybe there's a shed laid more of you. Of course, all sorts of things have been written and thought and discussed about what it means to be the older brother or sister and what that's what that is like for you. Um, I was actually saying to my children and I got them to I got them to think about it, but I forgot to go back and ask them what their answers were. One who's older, one who's younger. What is it like for you being the older one? Did it feel like, well, you're in charge, you were the bossy one, you were the bigger, stronger, taller one, all that sort of thing? Um, was it annoying because you were the younger one buzzing around? Or what was it like being the younger one? Um, were you always treated kindly by your old ones, always taken somewhere, always had someone to play with because now there were two of you or three of you, whatever. Uh, what it's like being the middle one, all sorts of things said about the middle children. So I wonder how that all's all been for you. And if the way that a sibling was treated affected you positively or negatively in some way or other, maybe if you were the last of a lot of children, maybe you felt you were out, left out, you have to sort of get on with it yourself uh, to a great extent. I met a lovely mum uh, yesterday, was it, or Friday? Friday, um, just outside the church, walking past, chatting to lots of lovely people. And uh, we were chatting and she had six children. And we were talking about, I thought, wow, six children. She was saying how some of them were at home at the moment and getting on and, and how good that was. So anyway, so families, and our experience of them and bringing some of that experience of our story today may well be helpful to you. So this week it's episode two of the parable of the prodigal son, the story of the amazing father and the two sons, the two siblings, if you like. The context of the story is that Jesus has been criticising for hanging out with all the so-called wrong people, all the sinners, you know, all the people that were often discarded and looked down on and judged as being immoral and outside the right religious circles and life. But Jesus loved to be seen with these people, which is great news. And uh, so when he hears this criticism from these religious people, he tells them three stories that kind of say, look, this is what I'm about. The first two about uh, lost someone who lost a coin, someone who lost a sheep. Uh, and then the third one is about uh, the story we're sharing today, the story of the son that went off and, uh, and made a bit of a mess of things. So um, that's what we're going to be sharing today, the second episode. But if you weren't there for the whole of the first episode, it doesn't matter. You can always go back and look on that. So maybe this story of the older son, though, is the one that Jesus was maybe trying to get his listeners to identify with um, because they are annoyed about who Jesus is hanging out with. And we'll see in the story in a moment that the older son is annoyed as well. Have you ever been invited to a party um, or a meal with people and and you got there and maybe you thought, actually, you were the only ones who were going to be invited. And you thought, actually, it's great. You know, we're invited. We're going to so-and-so's house. They've got a great place. We're going to put on a great meal. It's going to be great conversation, whatever. And you get there and you find that your heart sinks because you're not the only ones that have been invited. There are other people. And suddenly you're thinking, oh, right, OK, they've invited the, all these other people as Oh, they've invited them, but we don't really like them. We don't really kind of get on with them, do we? Why, why are they here? And then you, you find yourself annoyed because they don't deserve to be there like you do. Come on, we've all been there, haven't we? There's something of that in this story. So Jesus tells the story and first part of the story is all about the younger son, Tells a story of his younger son, asks for his inheritance from his father, gets it, goes away to a far and distant land and wastes all his money. 
And, uh, and then in the end, the only job he can get is kind of feeding the pigs. An awful job for a Jewish person to be listening to, as these Jews that have been listening to the story, that's awful. This son has really wrecked the family. He's morally bankrupt. He's physically, financially bankrupt. We hear how the son comes to his senses, thinks, I'll go home. I'll say sorry to God and to my father. I'll just say I'll be a servant. You know, at least I'll be fed. So he's on his way home. The father sees him coming and runs towards his son, embraces him, calls for the servants to get fresh clothes for him and then says, get the barbecue started and organises this amazing party. And he talks about how we're throwing the party. This son of mine was as good as dead, but he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. So the party begins. The younger son's so messed up, but now he's back in the heart of the family. We thought about how that's God's love, how his love is there for us, no matter how much we've messed up or whatever we think about ourselves. It doesn't matter. We are loved by God. So then we hear about, well, what happens next? Episode two of the story. So here it is from Luke chapter 15. Meanwhile, Part is going on, right? Meanwhile, the oldest son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes and you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, look, Dear son, you have always stayed with me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. Often we don't get to that bit of the story. We stick with episode one. The lost son comes home. Many of us, that's our story. It's definitely my story. And we celebrate with God a party, new life. Fantastic. But it is a story of two sons and a father who loves both sons and in his way goes out to both sons. So we're encouraged in this story to see through God's eyes how he views each person as dignified. It's almost like he says to people, you are valued and loved human. You are a loved and valued child of God, no matter what you've done in the past. And that is great news. For us, this means coming to terms with the fact that God loves people that we might find unacceptable. God lives, loves and likes people that we don't like and we don't necessarily find it easy to love. God loves people that we find difficult, unacceptable, people that we consider to be the other, if you like. Now, as followers of Jesus, as Christians, we find ourselves in this story invited to celebrate that somebody else has joined the family of God, that they are welcomed and loved and accepted by Jesus. And that's easy when those people are like you and me. For that is what the Pharisees were listening to um, yeah, as Jesus was telling this story, that's that's the kind of thing that they were listening to, how we are to in, you know, rejoice when other people join the party. And they were the stay at home, good, holy, devoted to religion ones. So we can understand something of their struggle. This wayward one comes back, you know, why the party? When we hear someone being warmly listened to as they tell their story of stumbling into faith from Christ, that a background that appalls us. You know, what is it we feel, if we're honest? We feel really challenged by that. There are some kind of coming to faith stories we really like. And yeah, we, we champion those people. But other ones we think, really? 
But they didn't do the thing like they ought to do. They didn't come to church to begin with. They didn't, you know, grow up in the church or, you know, they didn't seem to believe everything and they still don't understand everything. And yet somehow they're celebrated and rejoiced over. But here's the thing. Being friends with the friends of Jesus is non-negotiable for us Christians. Being friends with the friends of Jesus is non-negotiable for us who call ourselves Christians and followers of Jesus. This story has the capacity to reveal to us a bit more about who Jesus is, the true Jesus, and therefore the true God. You know, the, the scriptures tell us that if we want to see what God is like, look at Jesus, which is why we encourage people to read the Gospels. And if you've not read the Gospels, if you've not read much of scripture, then choose a Gospel, choose Matthew or Mark or Luke perhaps to read. Mark's the shortest, punch with packed power. Luke's a great story of Jesus mixing with all sorts of people. I love that. But if you want to see what God is like, we look to Jesus and here we see, you know, what God is like. And along the ways we read and hear these stories, we also discover something of what we're like. But sometimes to get to the good news of what we're like, we have to sort of travel through a little bit of dodgy, sketchy news as well. In the story, the oldest son is invited to see himself as celebrating the good news that his brother is home safe and well. And that he, the older brother, is always loved, has always been loved, will always be loved. And on the way, maybe he has to wrestle with who he is. And why he's so resentful. But we get that. We could argue alongside him, couldn't we? We really could get alongside him and say, yeah, why does God seem to honour the dishonourable? Why does God, you know, not just honour us who have been faithful and true and dedicated believers and have done the right thing? Of course, the Jewish faith at that time, particularly, you know, culturally, you know, doing the right thing was so important. And they would have known of the scriptures that talked about a good children who honour their parents, good people who do all the right thing and keep the, keep the rules and regulations. And that stuff can be important. Yes, but not to the exclusion of other people. So we do get it where the older son's at. And I think it's really important that we own that, that we wrestle with this stuff. Who is this God and what is he like? He's the God who honours those who live dishonourably, yes. He's the God who welcomes us back to himself and loves us indiscriminately. He loves us in spite of what we've done or think of ourselves. There's no easy answer, resolution to this story, if you like, these two episodes. Because Jesus, we, the Jesus we read about in the Gospels is always rewarding people who don't deserve it. He's always loving those that are unlovely and unlikable. That's who he is. Isn't that the God that we can rejoice in and celebrate? Isn't that the God? And if there was a God, if there is a God, isn't that the God that we want to believe in? You know, Christianity is the only faith that I'm aware of. They all recognise that we mess up and screw up or that bad things happen to us and take us to a difficult place in life. Most of the world religions do that. And I'm sure that only Christianity is the religion where God comes looking for us, epitomised by that loving father moving towards us and throws a party for us. It's the only faith where, as it were, God pray, pays the price for how we've messed up and will be thinking and meditating over that, contemplating that in the weeks to come as we come to Good Friday. And there's Jesus hanging on the cross in love for you and me with our name on his lips there, we believe. Now this God has this amazing love. That's the God I want to believe in. The God that loves Mark Allen in spite of some of the things I did and some, in spite of some of the things I became, that loves me now, forgives me for my past, you know, manages my present, and promises me a great future, eternal future with him. That's what I'm about. Because of Jesus, not because of what I've done, but because of what he's done. Because of the father loving to the son. Because of the father running, sorry, running to the other son or going to the other son, the older son and saying, come in. 
That's who this God is. It's good news. So who are we and what we like? Well, we are those made and loved by God. We are those who possibly look down on others' attempts to be religious or Christian. We are those who sometimes sneer and gossip and badmouth others in person and on Facebook. But with God's help, we are able to love and appreciate those whose lives are blessed and who are open to God and to move towards God in their own way and who are received and welcomed by God in God's way. At the end of the parable, we can hear the party, we can smell the food, we can hear the laughter, we sense the joy. We hear the father's invitation to the older son to come join the party. We hear the son argue and protest and the father's compassionate, heartfelt plea. And so episode two ends. So what happens next? Did the son go in and the whole family dynamic go in a particular direction or will he remain at a distance all his life so we google news of a possible and rumored episode three the next installment but there's nothing you see i reckon the story is told like that because episode three is about our response episode three it's written over your life and my life. Episode three is up for you and me to live and to tell. So maybe there are particular questions for us today. If in some way, yeah, I'm feeling like that older brother for whatever I see in life, maybe my family, my actual physical family right now. What? is going on in my heart. We could just name it and own it, really. It could be a really good place. Maybe the beginning of good news is recognizing some of the bad news, some of the sketchy stuff about ourselves. You know, maybe we're part of a blended family and someone got added into our family, step sibling, stepfather, stepmother, and something about us, you know, kind of found that difficult. It might have been really good, but maybe we find something about that difficult. How am I resentful? to another because they seem to be being blessed. And how might that be harming me actually? How am I being resentful to this God for his love for the other person I struggle with? What is it? And here's one of the key questions and it takes real big courage to ask this question actually, but looking for the answer can get fantastic results for us and our own sense of well-being and life and wholeness. What is it about me that means I am, am unhappy for another's joy. And what is it about me that when I see that person enjoying themselves makes me feel unhappy? What is it in there that God might want to heal or remove or change or set me free from? The good news is then that we're invited to know God's loving embrace when we have been a long way from him for whatever reason. We're, we're invited to come to him and just know his love, his kindness, his care. The scriptures say that if anyone is with Christ, in union with Christ, they are a new creation. Isn't that wonderful? Maybe that's what we're searching for and desiring so much. So as I conclude, what is God like? He is the one who shows to us who are wandering, wayward, sometimes wasteful of the things we have in life. He is the one who comes to those who are left out, lost, overlooked, sometimes unloved. He comes to us with a wild and adventurous love and throws a party and places an invitation in your hand and in my hand. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this amazing story. For episode one, episode two, and we want to thank you for episode three as well. Help us respond to your love for every person. Forgive us for when we have harmed 
or been unkind in word, thought or deed towards someone else that you love. Help us to know as you forgive us and set us free that being friends with the friends of Jesus is non-negotiable for us. And Father, if we're at the beginning of exploring whether you are alive, true, loving, please help us. Give us a sign. Help us to pray. And Lord, for some of us, we might want to know your loving embrace today. Help us to humbly come and maybe just pray to you or be with you and say, God, here I am. Show your love to me. Fill me with your loving presence. Maybe that could be our prayer. And lastly, Lord, we pray as we reach a year since the first lockdown, we pray today and this week ahead for all those who are lonely, lost, bereaved, hurting, unwell, for your loving presence with them. Be with all those who are sick and all those who care for them today. And Lord, help us still to celebrate the good things that you still give us, even in these times. Amen. Thanks so much for being here and watching. Um, if there's something here that you think you've heard from God or that might be interesting to somebody else, invite them to have a look, send them the link, uh, invite them to join our Facebook group. Uh, let's grow the family, people, and share the love. I uh, look forward to being with you um, if you're watching live, some of you on Zoom soon. If not, look forward to being with you next time. Continue to watch our Facebook group. Keep in touch with us that way. And um, yeah, see you next time. God bless. Bye now.